Hello, I'm Shauna Robbins, founder and CEO of Third Spark. And today I'm doing an Authority Magazine interview with Lisa Ryan. Lisa is a dynamic keynote speaker, a best-selling author, and chief appreciation strategist at Gratigy, a company dedicated to helping organizations harness the power of gratitude to create a stronger workplace culture. With over a decade of experience in the field, Lisa has worked with numerous businesses to enhance employee engagement and retention through gratitude-based strategies. Her work is grounded in the belief that gratitude can transform not only workplaces, but also individual lives by fostering mental wellness and resilience. Lisa's insights and practices and practical advice have made her a sought after speaker and a thought leader in the field of workplace culture and gratitude. So thank you, Lisa, so much for joining me today. I'm so happy to have you here. It is great to be here. Yeah, so let's um, dive into gratitude. I, like I said before, I'm so interested in, in what you have to offer. So tell me how you got started working with gratitude in the workplace of all places. Well, it was interesting because my uh, starting probably with my first, my very first Dale Carnegie class that I took like in the 80s, there was something about public speaking that I just fell in love with. I joined Toastmasters, went through all of that, and I knew I wanted to speak, but I had no idea what my topic should be. I mean, I was in sales, but I didn't really have my own process. And I had done some network marketing, but again, that didn't feel right. And then when I went on that weekend fire walk with my friends, um, four day powerful experience. And when we were driving home, we're all jacked up and excited about um, what we had learned and experienced and done in those four days. And so we were going to open up a Facebook thread to share with each other, you know, just to keep that energy going. And one of my friends had mentioned, hey, why don't we also share three things that we're grateful for? I think that was at the point that our Oprah was talking about it. This was like 2009. And uh, so we did that every day. We held each other accountable. And there were so many changes that happened in my life, both personally and professionally, that it was like at that moment, I knew to the core of my being that that was the message I was supposed to bring to the world. Now, the interesting thing about it was in 2009, 2010 um, timeframe, people weren't really talking about gratitude a lot, but they were talking about employee engagement. So I also knew that I had to switch the messaging to be one that corporate America would actually understand and accept. So I took that gratitude talk and turned it into employee engagement and employee retention. But now it, the, it's so interesting because in a post-pandemic economy, I'm getting booked just as much for pure gratitude as I am for workplace culture, employee engagement and employee retention. So a decade later, we're finally really focusing on those skills, gratitude, happiness, everything that in the past was considered soft skills. And as you and I know, there ain't nothing soft about it. These are essential skills that not only help us to be better in the workplace, but they help us better personally in all of our relationships as well. Yeah, I love that. I, you know, I have a gratitude practice and it's a game changer, just a total game changer for me. So, um, so talk to me a little bit, if you know, just off the top of your head, I'm curious if you know any data or statistics around gratitude, around um, healthy living, wellness, you know, it, it affects every single area of your life. And so I would love to hear if, if you, you know, if you have anything that you use when you go into these workplace, any models that you use to really teach people? What is it that they can learn from you? Yeah, well, it, I always talk about the Greater Good Science Center out at Berkeley is probably one of the best uh, resources as far as positive material. Dr. Robert Emmons, who is the world's premier researcher in the science of gratitude, posts a lot there. So a lot of times I use... Um, one of, I, I use several of his studies, but the one that I talk about the most is that when he, they did a gratitude experiment, that they had three groups of people. One of them wrote down every day the things they were grateful for. The other ones recorded the things that made them angry or upset. And then the third group simply recorded the day's events. He used those as the, as the control group. 
Well, after 10 weeks, he found out that the gratitude group was 25% happier. They had fewer physical ailments. Um, when he interviewed people associated with the gratitude group, they noticed the difference. So all of these things started changing and I had experienced those in my life. Um, the other really interesting resource is the Institute of Heart Math because what Heart Math does is they look at the um, our physical emo our emotions and how that impacts us physically. So one of the studies that I share a lot in my programs, they did two that I like. Um, one compares anger and uh, or, um, anger and compassion and its impact on the immune system is the one that surprises the most people because I let them know that for every five minutes you spend in anger, you actually reduce the effectiveness of your immune system for up to six hours. Where if we choose positive emotions, in this study it was compassion, but I can also liken that to gratitude, that when we spend five minutes in positive emotions, we elevate our immune system for the next six hours. Um, they also did one on appreciation and frustration and its impact on the heart. And they saw, they hooked people up to monitors, they put them through a period of frustration and they watched how their heart beat. And you kind of liken it to a, uh, to a lie detector test. It's kind of like all over the place. But when they took that same group of people and hooked them up to monitors and put them through a period of appreciation, of care, of compassion, of love, you actually saw the physical manifestation of that smooth, rhythm of the heart. So I, you know, I, I tell people when you are choosing negative emotions, you know, all those people that you are letting live rent free in your head, I mean, those people are killing you. So that's personally, but when we look at the numbers, holy cow, there are so many numbers as far as, you know, disengaged employees are costing the U.S. economy $400 billion a year. You have it, when employees are engaged, there's five times fewer safety incidents. And I, I specialize a lot in manufacturing. So obviously safety is really important. Uh, but companies are 120% more profitable. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And a lot of times I like to in, incorporate that research because when you're dealing with businesses, it's you have to show the numbers behind it. We all know that gratitude is good and it's a nice feel good emotion, but the fact that there is a, a, a bottom line impact to organizations, not only from a dollar standpoint, but the ability to track and keep people, it makes a huge difference. Wow, that's amazing. I love that you brought up HRT. I mean, uh, H, um, heart rate variability, HRV. I work yeah, with a lot yes. of clients that have that. I work with a lot of clients that use heart math. I think that's great. And I love that you can tie this into the corporate workplace with retention and just overall happiness. I'm sure that once you know the corporate culture is more positive and more gratitude based, I can only imagine what a better workplace that would be and how much more people would really enjoy working there if it, they were actually surrounded by people that appreciated them and um you know used a gratitude practice like i would think that that would be just uh just really fundamentally important for retention so i can definitely see how those things are all related um so kind of switching gears a bit i want to hear a little bit about your book and if you could talk a little bit about that that would be amazing um sure actually i uh, my last book was called thank you very much it's gratitude strategies to create a workplace culture that rocks and in that book, the thing is that I like to write books the way I like to read them, short, sweet, to the point, give me the information that I want and let me get out of there. So um, thank you very much. It's if you want the chapter on the stay interview, you can go to that chapter, page 85. If you want why um, leadership training is important, why you should invest in employee training, why you should focus on mental health. And then I actually focus on, I, I feature four of the previous guests of my Manufacturers Network podcast um, in different um, chapters too. So it was a lot of fun to to um, to write, and it's one of those books. Again, I like to use it as a takeaway alongside my programs because you know I do a keynote, everybody's all jacked up and excited, and then of course they go back to the office, life slaps them upside the head, and everything goes out the window. 
if they have a resource that they could use and just those little reminders. But in thank you very much, it also starts with that whole chapter on gratitude and my experience with the firewalk and why it matters. Because when we look at having that personal practice, a lot of times we look at engagement or retention as a check mark. Ugh, what do I need to do to engage my employees this week? You know, but if we can start for ourselves looking for the good, when we start to notice different, better relationships with our family and the people outside of the workplace, then we bring that person to the workplace. So there's got to be this, this really heartfelt commitment to making the changes that go along with it. And the nice thing about it, and the science shows it too, is that gratitude literally rewires your brain in that um, my practice, again, I started in 2009. I have no idea how, how I would have made it through the pandemic uh, without that. Because after a decade of having a regular gratitude practice, when literally my entire business, the rug was yanked out for you know a solid year and into two years, I had to figure it out. Well, what's the best thing that happened with that? Well, I got to spend eight months with my husband. We had a blast. Um, you know, I had I had time to do my podcast. I discovered acrylic painting. I had yeah. You know, so all of these things came out of it instead of getting sucked into the gloom and doom of oh, the meeting industry is never coming back again. That's what gratitude does. Yeah. Wow. That's such a powerful statement. I really agree with that. Um, so give me an idea of how you do your gratitude practice every day, or how do you, how do you recommend that people do it um, who work with you? Well, the, in, my, in one of my programs, my pure gratitude program, I talk about three different ways. Number one, the morning gratitude journal, which is what I do every morning. I, my journal is underneath my bed. You know, before I talk, take that long walk in the morning, I reach out from under the bed and I just write down five sentences of I am grateful for. And a lot of times I will be grateful in advance of things happening. You know, I'm grateful for checks in the mail. It's always fun when that one comes. <laughs> But, you know, I'm grateful for a positive sales call with one of my clients today. So it kind of sets that that expectation. Um, the second one is the wins journal. Now, I'm not as good as this one, but the wins journal is looking back on the day and writing down five things, five good things that happen. And a lot of times, you know, that could be the more difficult of the two journals, particularly if you've had a really rough day. and when you focus on the good things that happen, you can always you can always find them. I mean, I had an experience my my um, car of fifteen years, two hundred and twenty one thousand miles on her, backing out of the driveway. She's making really weird noises that I did not expect. I still had high hopes because I had three year tags on her. Twenty twenty six. Well. The frame broke. Literally, the frame was about to crack. And so I'm like, well, I haven't had a car payment since 2016. That's bad news. I mean, the brand new cars for the first time since 2009. So that's what it does. Anyway, um, changing. So the wins journal, I definitely focused on that. And then my favorite one that I use all the time, I call the ABCs of Gratitude. And that's for those nights you just can't fall asleep. You have those voices in your head, you know, reminding you of all the things that you didn't get done and all the things you need to do and all of that kind of stuff. They're really annoying. So with the ABCs of gratitude, I'll put a random letter in the alphabet. You know, to, tonight I started with A. I'm so grateful for this interview with Authority Magazine. B, I'm grateful for the beautiful summer that we're having. C, I'm grateful for my cats. So Tinkerbell and Simba. What that does is it gives all of those voices something to do. It help they alphabetize. And I found that on some evenings, you know, I'm going to go through the alphabet twice. But most nights, five or six letters, and I'm fast asleep. And the other thing that Dr. Emmons found 
is that people who have a regular practice of gratitude are awake less time before they fall asleep, they sleep more soundly, and they awaken more refreshed. So in my ABCs of gratitude, which I love referring to as my drug-free way to fall asleep, yeah, yeah. you know, it's really helping that gratitude process. I love that. You know, I'm a sleep expert, so I coach women um, in the sleep area, and I definitely encourage them to use gratitude. You know, it's so hard. The wins, I think, is the hardest part of that. I love your ABC technique. I think that's great. Um, but the wins are so challenging because we're so hard on ourselves. You know, right. um, we're so quick to find fault with ourselves, not so much other people, but with ourselves of ways that we could do things better. And then we're, it's hard to let go of that. And that definitely keeps the cortisol levels high, which then impacts the sleep over time. And so, yeah, I think that, like you said, the drug-free way of falling asleep and staying asleep is this is such a powerful tool. Gratitude is such a powerful tool, whether you're using it in the office, you're using it at home, um, you know, you're using it in your car while you're sitting in traffic. You know, the idea that you can grab three or five things that are working in your life right now. And really focus on those. And I and I always say, I liken it to like when you're driving a car and you want to look at where you want to go, not where you don't want to go. You know, you're not looking at the, the center divider or the head on traffic that's coming at you, right? You're just staying in your lane. You're looking at where you want to go. And to me, gratitude is that tool. It keeps you going in the direction that you want to go in. And I like that you bring up too, that you're grateful for things that maybe have not yet happened that also, I think, is a really important, powerful piece of gratitude because so many times we're we're in transition. We're in transition with jobs or families. I mean, I know that that my focus is really helping women in midlife, and that's such a period of transition where you're leaving one part of your life that is done now. Kids have, are empty nesting, and maybe you're already at the top of your career, and you're looking for something else or whatever it might be. You're moving towns, you're moving homes, and you're, you're moving into something else, but you don't know what that is quite yet. And that creates a lot of stress and anxiety. And um, to have a gratitude practice where you're grateful for, you know, whatever it is that you, you see yourself moving into, but maybe even the opportunities of, like you said, how is this going to be the best thing that ever happened to me? I love that you said that. That's something that I had a business coach years ago teach me to say every time I hit a, a setback that I considered to be a setback, but really wasn't a setback. That mental reframe around, you know, okay, how is this the best thing? Whether it's a layoff, whether it's a divorce, whether, you know, whatever it is that comes to you in your life, really reframing things from this sense of feeling grateful that this situation is in your life for a reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I, I love that we've been able to have this conversation. I love that you, that you do what you do. Like, I think that, you know, spreading gratitude and helping people, um, not only be in a healthier work environment, but also be in a healthier mental space and physical space and helping their, their, like you said, their immune system, their heart, their sleep, you know, all of these things, it makes a difference in how we show up as women, as mothers, as wives, as bosses, you know, as human beings on this planet. And that's really what I think it, you know, matters most is becoming your best self. Yes, it does. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks. It was awesome. I had a lot of fun in our conversation. Yeah. I'm so glad that you were, were able to, to participate. So I look forward to hopefully connecting with you and seeing you more. Now, how can people reach you if they would like to talk to you about what you do? Sure. I am prolific on LinkedIn. Um, and there are also about 1700 other Lisa Ryans on LinkedIn. So if you can do Lisa Ryan and Gratigy, connect with me there, say that you saw the interview. My website is lisaryanspeaks.com. And there's a lot of resources on that as well. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, Lisa. You're welcome. <laughs>